Today I'm going to be building a front-end application, but there is one catch. I'm not allowed to delete any code. So I can't use backspace, I can't use the delete key, I can't comment out code, nothing like that. If I make a mistake, whether it be a typo or an actual logical mistake, what I need to do is somehow use that broken code in future code. And what we're going to be doing is trying to build a paint application, sort of like Microsoft Paint. So we have paint.html, CSS, and JS. They are all simply empty files. So to begin with, let's create an HTML file. I need to be very careful here because if I make a mistake in the HTML like I just did, then it's going to be hard to fix. This one might be fixable though. How did, why did they try to make a second HTML tag? That's okay. So let's make this into our head and we can open that up. And then we will have the body as well, but we need to use TM and I want the TM to be inside of my body tag. So I'm going to say body, let's make this an open body tag, and then I'll have TM inside of the body tag, and we will find a use case for that in a moment. Okay, so inside of the head tag, first of all, we need to link our CSS. So we can add a link tag with paint.css, and then we need our JavaScript as well. So we can add a script tag with the source equal to paint paint.js, and then we need to make this a module, I think we'll make it a little bit simpler. So we can say type equals module. Okay, and now in the body tag, we need a canvas, but we also need to somehow use the T and the M. So let's think about this. So the T could be in width or height and the M, I guess we can use M as like an ID or something like that. Okay, so let's go to a new line. And let's say we have a canvas and we need to open up the canvas tag. And inside of the canvas tag, we are going to have a height. And this is going to be equal to, let's say 200 pixels. And then we can have a width equal to 200 pixels. And so now I need to use the M in an ID. So we can say ID is going to be equal to and I'll call this main. That's not a terrible ID name, I guess. And then we can close out the canvas. Okay, so a little bit unconventional with the ID of main, but I think we got our HTML how we want it. Now let's come over to the CSS and let's just add a border to the canvas so we can actually see it. So let's say one pixel solid black. Save this and we can refresh the browser and we do have a canvas now. Okay, so now in JavaScript, we need to get the canvas and when we click in the canvas, we want to start drawing until we unclick or whenever the mouse is lifted. Okay, so first let's get the canvas. So we can say const canvas is going to be document.getElementById and we called it main, so we will get that ID. And then we can say we have a context and this is going to be canvas dot get context, I believe. And this takes in the type of context, which is going to be a 2D context. Okay, so now the canvas is the one that needs the event listeners. So we can say canvas dot add event listener. And first of all, we will have mouse down. And when the mouse is down, what we want to do is we want to start drawing. So we can say start drawing, trying to not make more typos. So we can say function, and I spelled function wrong. Okay, so function, and let's do it like this. Okay, so now this function is going to be our start drawing function. And now we just have ton. So what I wanted to do in start drawing was flip a Boolean flag to true as to if we are drawing or not. So what can we call that Boolean flag that uses ton? Is drawing is what I wanted, but that does not have a ton in it. Let's just call it ton drawing instead. So that is good enough equals true. Okay. So now let's say let ton drawing equal false. So this is essentially our is drawing uh, boolean flag. Okay, 
And then we need to handle if the mouse is lifted, we would stop drawing. So we can say, I did not mean to add a constant. I wanted to say canvas. I don't know why I typed that. I swear doing things like this just makes your brain go crazy. All right, so canvas .add event listener, and we will add mouse up, and this will be stop drawing. Okay, so now let's add the stop drawing function, and we'll use that const in a moment, so we can say function stop drawing, and ton drawing is going to be equal to false. Okay, so now we can start and stop drawing, and what we need next is to actually draw. So let's add one more. So we can say canvas .add event listener, and this one's going to be mouse move. And for mouse move, we want to draw. Okay, so now let's say function draw. And I want to get the constant that we just created inside of draw, but I'm Afraid if I open print or open the curly braces, it's going to add a closing brace automatically. So I think if I go down here like this, I can get this to not have. I did not mean to make a new line there, but oh well. I think now I should be able. Nope, it gave me the closing brace. Dang it. Okay, well we'll use that for another function, I guess. So now in draw, we need to draw a line. And then we'll find a use case for this constant and that closing brace down below it. Okay, so to draw a line, what do we need to do? Well, first of all, if we aren't currently drawing, so if ton drawing is false, we need to just return. So if, no, I have an asterisk. It's the key next to open parentheses. What do I do with that? There's no way I need multiplication in here. Okay, well, if not ton drawing, then we want to return, but I guess we can just return a string of an asterisk because it's not going to make a difference what we return. Okay, so there we go, now we're returning. And then what we need to do is actually draw a line. And the line we want to draw is going to be from wherever the previous line ended to where the mouse is now. So first of all, we can keep track of that last value. So we can say let last x equal zero initially and let, I just deleted an E so I can't do that. So we want last Y, but I guess this is just going to be spelled wrong as last Y, it's also going to be equal to zero. Okay, so now inside of draw, what we want to do is start the sort of drawing process, which we do with our context. So we can say context dot and I believe it's move to is how we start drawing. And this is going to take in our last X as well as the last Y. And then well, actually before we do move to, we need to actually begin a path. So we can do context.begin path first. And then we do move to, which is what like creates the starting point, which I always found confusing. And then the ending point is, I think it's last two or line two, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Context.line two, and we want the like new X and new Y values. Let's say new X and new Y, and I'll define those up here. So let's come over here and say const new X is going to be equal to, and we want the event, and then we'll get event.client X. I believe client X is what we want. And then const new y is going to be event.client y. Okay, so now we are creating a path and we have the line and then we need context.stroke to actually like draw the line on the screen. And then what else do we need to do? Okay, so we need to update last x and last y now. So we can say last x is going to be equal to new x and last y is going to be equal to new y. Okay, so that should work other than the fact that we have this rogue const here. So what can we use this for? So we need like another function that's going to need this. So let's add a function for like a color picker and then we can use that for this. So let's in paint.html, let's just add an input tag. So we can say input 
but I don't want it to autocomplete because it's going to autocomplete to a type of text, which we don't want. So we want a type of, and we want a color picker. Is it color or color picker? I think it's just color. And let's give this an ID equal to color as well. And let's see, this is going to be a self-closing tag. Okay, so now we have a color picker. So if we save this, okay, yeah. So we can see in the output, we now have this color picker thing. And now in JS, we can add a event listener to this color picker. So let's see, how can we do this? Let's come up to the top first of all and just get the color picker. So we can say const color picker is going to be equal to document.getElementById and we want that color ID. And then down here where we're adding all the event listeners, we can say color picker .add event listener. And when this changes, we will say change color. Okay, so now let's add a change color function and hopefully we can use this constant. So we can say function change color. And now I need to get this to not auto create the closing brace. So maybe if I do it like this, yeah, that works perfectly. It looks ugly, but it does work. So now we have a constant. So we can say const new color. I was supposed to say new color, but I messed up. Oh, we're, we're still good. New color. And how do we get the new color? Well, we want whatever was picked in the color picker, which I would imagine is in the event. See, I've never actually used a color picker, to be honest, but I would imagine it's just going to be event.target.value most likely. So hopefully that works. And then we need to actually update the, like the stroke color. And that is on the context, I believe. So we can say context dot, and what is this? I think it's going to be, I think it's stroke style, if I remember correctly. It's been a long time since I've used this. That's going to be equal to new color. Okay, so now our JavaScript should actually be functional. So let's save this and see if this is working. So what well, we are drawing, that's for sure. We are not exactly drawing lines in the way I hoped. Let's see if the color picker works. So let's make this red. Okay, so the color picker works, um, but it seems like it seems like it is sort of following my mouse, but last X and last Y seems to be incorrect. Let's see. Oh, it's because we have, I think this is supposed to be last X or last Y instead. It is. So this is supposed to be last but we have last. So let's make it least, and then we can change last to be least, and we can change last to be least up here. That's a big brain play if I've ever seen one. Now, okay, progress. I guess this is because we had zero, zero to begin with. Um, I don't know how to fix that. Uh, why, how do I make it not just like, start from nowhere at the beginning. So I guess that's because at the the first time we do this, or when we first click, oh, I know what we want to do. When we first start drawing, we want to set last x equal to, and we'll have event. This will be, I think, event dot client x and then we'll do least y equal to event dot client y okay so now whenever we start drawing we update x and y to be or the last x and y to be in the right position sweet this seems to be working make sure the color picker still works awesome this is working let's see what else could we do to make this better i think we could also Let's add a, a, like a, what do they call it? Like the stroke width thing to this. Let's add a range picker as well. So let's come down here, add another input. So this one's going to be input type equals range and ID equals width. Okay, so let's add a range picker. Okay, so now we have this range thing. And I guess we need a min and a max. So we can say min is going to be equal to one 
max is going to be equal to, I don't know what like a good maximum width is. Let's go with 50. Okay, so min one, max 50. I actually don't know if those are supposed to have units either. We'll just leave them as one and 50 for now. I don't think so. I think they're just numbers. Okay, so now we need to get the width picker as well. Actually, I can't, I was going to copy paste that and then uh, like change it, but I can't do that because I can't delete things. So instead we'll do const width picker. It's going to be equal to document dot get element by ID. Did I just call it width or did I call it width picker? I called it width. Okay. So we have our width picker and then we need a change event on the width picker. So width picker, oops, dot add event listener change and we'll do change width. Okay. So now change width should be pretty much the same as change color, except instead of stroke style, we want the width of the line. I think it's just line width. So we can say function change width event. And we don't actually need that constant we did before. That was just because we had that extra const. So we can just say context dot. I, I think it's line width. Line width is going to be equal to event dot target dot value. Okay, so let's save this, refresh this, and we're drawing a line. Let's do something like this. Okay, so now we get a bigger line and I think there's a property we can change to make this to where it like doesn't do this thing where it's like, kind of like has like gaps in it. I think you can make it like thicker somehow to where it's like actually filling the whole thing. But that one, honestly, I don't remember how to do. So let's go ahead and end the video there. I think this worked out pretty well. It ended up working. I made a few mistakes. We got some funny variable names, but for the most part, everything worked out. So I hope you found this video entertaining, helpful, something like that. Tell me what you thought of it. I know it's a little bit different from content I've done before, and I will see you next time.